Hello YouTube. Well, today's an exciting day for me because this is going to be my first moto vlog. And hopefully, you're having a good ride. Try that. Hopefully, this uh, deadens the wind noise enough to where you have a pleasant audio experience. We're riding my 2016 Honda NC700X with 21,000 miles on it. She's been a good bike. I've had lots and lots of different bikes over the years. This one has by far been my favorite because of the DCT automatic. I know. Total loser for riding a scooter. But you know what? It's not all about picking up ladies. But on that subject, Mrs. Chowder absolutely loves this bike because every time it shifts, she doesn't have to smack helmets with me. I know that sounds funny, but it's true. It's the smoothest thing in the world, and I don't miss any of the experience of having to shift. That being said, I went and rode the Indian Challenger about two weeks ago, and I hate to admit, that's a mighty tempting little piece of equipment right there gotta love it american made v-twin all the visceral parts but not like a harley went and rode a harley harley road glide and it had a stage two kit on it with pipes and air cleaner and supposedly it had a tune on it and they were touting how fast it was and I'll make the point that that might have been one of the most beautiful motorcycles I've ever actually sat on. But to ride it, what the hell is wrong with a 2,000 mile used motorcycle with that much performance razzmatazz to it and the damn thing doesn't hardly run. I couldn't even hardly get it to pull away from a stop sign without freaking trying to kill the motor. Now, albeit part of that's probably just me, but that clutch lever is an on-off switch, one, and two, it just wants to burble and burble and do what it does until it just dies. And then once you get it moving, it's perfectly fine. It's uh, a 2020. 114. I'm sorry. It it should run smoother. Even with all the performance stuff. If you can't drive it in the city and the only thing it's good for is the highway, why would I buy that? I hate to say it, I've also rode the Goldwing DCT, and I absolutely love that bike. The downside, it's literally too refined. It, uh, you just lose the entire riding experience on it. It's like, you know, for the amount of money I spent here, I might as well just bought a Prius because now I have heat and, like, a roof. But, holy crap, is that thing refined. Smooth. You don't even feel anything, which, again, is part of the problem with that Indian Challenger. Oh, lordy me. That one... I couldn't get the smile off my face, and because of that, I couldn't even get the helmet off. That was a fine, refined 
piece of equipment that literally gives you everything that the motorcycles that you're not happy about are lacking. It's got the accoutrements. It's got the, the navigation with the touch string that you can reach without having to lean forward. You never have to take your eyes off the road pretty much. It's just a really well thought out machine with a motor in it that literally just does whatever it is you want it to. The Harley Davidson purists, they hate it. And I don't think that they hate it because they've rode it and said, well, oh, the thing just isn't any good. I think they hate it because they do truly see it as somewhat of a threat to their existence. And I don't mean that it's going to put Harley Davidson out of business. It's just not going to do it. That's misconception on people that are wanting to see things change at Harley. And, uh... I don't know. I don't know if Harley's capable of changing. They always say, oh, well, people buy these bikes because they want to make them their own. Really? You want it to run like a piece of shit? The drivability is half of the reason you freaking get up in the morning and jump on. That's why people buy freaking Hondas that have uh, ridiculous amounts of refinement in them. I'll give you that this one here is a little more refined in the fact that it's got the... Uh, DCT. But beyond that, it's a pretty damn basic motorcycle. And you know, when I have to actually start adding up what do I hate most about this bike? It's the freaking chain drive. You kind of start getting really tired of freaking maintaining chain all the time. I'm not going to say that, you know, it's that big of a deal, but I'm a daily rider. Rain, shine, pretty much it's got to be ice or snow before I get off the damn bike. But that being said, that brings new challenges to chains. And I can't stand it anymore. It's time for a shaft drive or a belt. So the short list has pretty much become the Indian Challenger or the Gold One. And I'm really leaning towards that Challenger. It's kind of funny. I don't want to buy the Dark Horse because everybody wants a Dark Horse, but I want all the features that the Dark Horse has. I don't want to buy the Limited because I hate chrome handlebars. It's just a personal preference thing. But if I'm going to spend the money, I'm buying the bike I want. So I'm literally wanting the base model. I really like that metallic gray. It's pretty freaking awesome looking. And then I will... Uh, and I, I have to say, I like the chrome accents on the motor and the pipes. I'm not a, I don't like that blacked out. You got to remember, I'm a daily rider. I do 20,000 miles a year, and stuff that's painted has a tendency to uh, have problems when it goes through heat cycles that much. So I want chrome, just easier to maintain. But then I'll go ahead and add the dark horse sparkle to it, right? Put the blacked out crash bars on it and whatnot, and that'll go along really nice with the black handlebars and black uh, switch gear that comes with the uh, the base model. But that being said, by the time I add the sat nav and everything, it's going to be just as expensive as a limited, and all I have is a base. But at least I have the one I want. I have it built the way I want it, and you know I'm happy with it. Something I can live with. That's how I justify spending a ridiculous amount of money on a freaking motorcycle when I could just have that car. Fresh pavement. Gotta love that. So, riding around the hillsides of uh, the upper side of Lake Oswego, this is where I grew up. My high school is just up the way here. Yes, I pride myself in saying that I was uh, an alumni of Lake Ridge High School, class of 87. Makes me really freaking old. Yes, probably too old to be riding a freaking motorcycle. But you know what? I have a lot of fun doing it. How's lockdown treating everybody? That's what I really want to know. Everybody do what I did? 
not stay home. It's pretty hard for me to uh, interact with people on a bike. Just saying. And uh, I guess that leads me to my next thing is, you know, I probably rode a half a million miles on motorcycles when I was just turned 20 years old, 1988. I literally got on a 250 and rode all the way to Phoenix, Arizona. You know, that's something everybody should do just once in their life. Take a ridiculously small motorcycle and ride it a ridiculously long distance. Just so that way you can better understand what real pain is. On the upside, I made it. I'm still here. I will admit there was a detour in Los Angeles because, well, I was young and an idiot. Didn't really know my way around and took an exit. Compton. That didn't fare real well. But I learned a valuable lesson. You know, when you come across an exit and it doesn't look like it's something necessarily that's gonna be your flavor, move on. You don't have to take the exit in front of you. Wow. This might be the most traffic I've ever seen here in my entire life. My brother broke his arm right there on that curb. Pretty awesome. It was a snowball fight gone wrong. <laughs> My house, well, used to be. God, I hate him mowing all that freaking grass. Anyway, now I got a nice little patch. Maybe six feet wide, ten feet long. Neighbor kids do it for a buck. Love them kids. Entrepreneurial little bastards. Anyway, onward and upward. So, my Honda. I love it. It uh, might be the cheapest motorcycle I've ever owned. It literally, it gets me 50 miles to the gallon. Um, all the time doesn't matter if I'm commuting or I'm canyon carving or what I'm doing I'm getting 50 miles to the gallon I can get 70 I can get 45 but it never drops below 50 and that is just absolutely outstanding which is funny speaking of gas it looks like uh, it's uh, time for a fill up and uh, these days that uh, is usually about seven dollars on seven dollars I can go about 200 miles. Now this leads me to my new dilemma. The Challenger ain't gonna do that. And I don't know how much uh, maintenance that motor is gonna be. Hmm. Something to take into consideration before I go buying something. Just saying. So anyway, we're just taking the back roads, kind of going around before I have to go to work in an hour. Ah, the reason everybody wants to live in my hometown, everybody loves the view, doesn't matter which side of the lake you live on you're gonna have a really really nice backyard the downside boy is it expensive to live here it's kind of funny but an awful lot of the people I grew up with we all knew our parents had some money that was uh, pretty easy to tell what well, was kind of funny for all of my friends that all went to college and did their thing. It's amazing uh, how many of them don't live here anymore. 
I got lucky. I uh, I moved away and was fortunate enough to be able to come back. And uh, when I came back, I was uh, capable of uh, supporting us. And we're uh, we're enjoying life. Here's a house. Now ah, monster. That thing's been for sale for like two or three years now. That's what happens when you build too much house. There's only three people in the world that can afford it. To the people who say, well, you can't really ride a DCT. I never put my feet down there. The low center of gravity on this bike just makes it an absolute pleasure to ride around. I won't be doing that with a gold bike. However, when I did ride it, the one thing I do remember was how easy it was to ride at low speed. Now, next question. India. Would you be interested in making a DCT? Just saying. You know, the demographic that can afford a twenty plus thousand dollar motorcycle, and let's just face it, that sun gun's gonna be twenty-five grand by the time you get it out of the damn dealership. We're old guys. Shifting isn't necessarily in our repertoire. And uh, the older we get, the less we're capable of it. So how about giving us something? little more old person capable because you know with the motor in that damn thing I can just see it being turned into a trike by 15 different companies Lake Oswego's finest but in any case YouTube have a great day we're having all the dang riots all over freaking the world now, it seems like. And, uh, just doesn't really seem like it's as necessary as its prevalency has come to. So, that's just my two cents. Good reason to put knobbies on these damn bikes, huh? Anyway, I'm gonna get to the road construction, get off to work. Hopefully, uh, all my friends out there who, uh, whew, dang, know the real me, um, know that I'm taking a break from my photography stuff. Got tired of all the politicking on Instagram. It's not why I Instagram. I Instagram to share creative thought processes and ideas with like-minded people instead all I'm seeing now is everything's freaking politicized so yeah Instagram sorry but I'm done I don't know if I'll even be back maybe we'll see anyway this is a skid chowder out y'all have a wonderful rest of your week